In this video, we're going to be talking about the heart. Now, the heart acts as a pump between the lungs and the rest of your body. Blood from your body and from the lungs comes into the heart, and then it gets pumped back to the lungs and to the rest of the body. The main reason behind this is so that oxygenated blood from the lungs can get to the body and that deoxygenated blood from the body can return back to the heart and go to the lungs for gas exchange. However, the heart has a much more complicated structure than just a box. So let's look inside the internal structure of the heart. Any images of the heart that we see are usually flipped. So what that means is the left side is on the right side of the paper and the right side of the heart is on the left side of the paper. The reason it's like this is so that you can imagine it's the heart of your patient. Okay, these two blood vessels bring blood into the heart. Here we can see that blood enters the heart from these blood vessels. These vessels are called veins. And a good way to remember that is vein says in at the end of it. It's important to note that veins bring in both types of blood to the heart. Deoxygenated and oxygenated. The vein that's on the right side of the heart, so in this case on the left side of the page, brings blood in from the body. And the vein that's on the left side of the heart, or on the right side of this page, brings blood from the lungs. And they are called the vena cava and pulmonary vein. Once blood enters the heart, the first chamber that it goes into are called the atrium. Or you can say atria if you're referring to them both. On its way to the next chamber, the blood passes through some valves, and these are called atrioventricular valves. The one on the left side of the heart is called the bicuspid, and the one on the right side of the heart is called the tricuspid. And the reason they're called that is because the number of valves they have. So a bicuspid has two valves, bi as in two, and a tricuspid has three small valves, so tri as in three. The next chambers are called ventricles. Now, the ventricles are much more larger than the atria and have more muscle around them. However, the left ventricle has even more muscle compared to the right ventricle. And this is because the left ventricle pumps blood to the whole body, whereas the right ventricle only pumps to the lungs, which is quite close to the heart. The blood then makes its way to the arteries. However, it passes through another set of valves. These valves are called semilunar valves. Just like the heart has two veins, it also has two arteries, and these are called the pulmonary artery and the aorta. The pulmonary artery takes blood to the lungs, and the aorta takes blood to the rest of the body, from heads to shoulders, knees and toes. Now you might have noticed the word pulmonary refers to lungs. So we can see here, pulmonary artery is taking blood to the lungs, and pulmonary vein is bringing blood in from the lungs. Now this line in the middle of the heart is called the septum and its main purpose is to prevent the mixing of deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood in the two ventricles. Now an interesting fact is that all babies have a hole in their septum and this allows the mixing of blood which is fine whilst they're in the womb because babies don't really need to use their lungs. However, once they're born, this hole closes. In some cases, the hole remains there even after birth and this can be dangerous for the baby because it means less oxygenated blood will be able to go to the body. This part of the heart is called the apex. Okay, so we had a brief overview of the basic internal structure of the heart. Now we're going to add a bit more detail. First of all, the vena cava has two ends, the superior side and the inferior side. The superior side brings blood in from the head and shoulders or the upper body and the inferior side brings blood in from the lower body. Both eventually enter the right atrium. The aorta looks something like this. This is called the aortic arch, and these smaller blood vessels take blood to different parts of the upper body. Also, you can see down here that the rest of the aorta branches off and takes blood to the lower body. The pulmonary artery also branches into two sides. Each side takes blood to a different lung. And finally, the pulmonary vein also has two branches. And again, these bring blood in from two different lungs. So that was the internal structure. Let's look at the external structure. And the main thing in the external structure is this little vessel called a coronary artery. This vessel carries oxygen to the heart cells. 
Sometimes, however, the coronary arteries can get blocked. In this case, that means there's going to be no oxygen for the heart cells, so they will not be able to do aerobic respiration. Instead, they'll undergo anaerobic respiration, and as a result, the cells will die. And this is a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.